Okay, in this demo, you will learn how to migrate from PSP or Pod Security Policy to Pod Security Admission, also known as PSA. The high level migration strategy is to try out which Pod Security, uh, <coughs> pod security standard will work on the namespace. And if that works, we iterate to the Pod Security standards that work. And we iterate to the pod security standards and then we'll see what what is the most secure pod security standard that could be applied on NASIS without warnings. Uh, the high level is a strategy. Now let's take a look at what's defined in the cluster. So we'll see we have a pod security policy here defined uh, called my PSP. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I think um, the main use case is preventing privilege and then making sure that the uh, pods run as a specific user and group. So let's take a look. We have a cluster role that, that allows you to use this pod security policy which is required, otherwise none of your pods will be able to run. Um, now we have a cluster role binding that assigns this to all the service accounts across all the clusters. So this is the, the pod security policy that any service account across all nations can use in my cluster. Um, let's take a look at an example of how this is currently preventing previous pods. So we have an Nginx deployment. It has uh, security contacts set as previous true and net admin. Um, my expectation is that pod security policy should be preventing this from being deployed. Now let's take a look. It did create it. Well, let's take a look, further look. Did it actually create the pods as well? It did create a deployment and it created the pods. Um, Looks like it didn't, which is great. We expect it to not be able to create it. It says true, failed to create. Let's take a look at the event logs to understand why it wasn't able to create. And um, there we go. We see a error creating pods, Nginx previous. It's forbidden by <coughs> pod security policy. Um, so that's great. We're seeing the PSP that would define being effective in preventing previous pods. Um, now, let's take a look at another example. Let's delete this Nginx example and let's try another example that's not purchased. Um, so we have pretty much the same. It's an Nginx app. It has a very simple index, index HTML that it serves. Um, it mounts the index from a config map, which is where we have defined the actual um, index HTML file that's being served by Nginx. And now we see that it uh, it should have deployed the success rate. Let's take a look. Uh, yes, it says replicas created. It did it successfully. Uh, so what we're going to do now is this is the part where we're going to try the different pod security standards. And we're going to start from the most secure one, which is restricted, and see if we were to apply this policy, if we were to apply this pod security standard, would it be able to admit the currently running pods in the namespace? And when we do that, we see that the existing pods uh, in namespace violate the new pod security level. So that means that this is probably not, a, not the right pod security standard for us because it's too secure. But you might also think, well, maybe I can make this application more secure and you can, can do that as well. That's part of the strategy is to you can make the decision by looking at the warnings. Would it be feasible to make my, my, my current pod more secure? But in general, when you do migration, you don't want to introduce yet more change. So in general, the approach would be to try the baseline policy. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to try the baseline policy here um, and see if that throws any warnings. So we see this time it actually didn't, uh, it didn't, show any warning. So that means that the baseline policy can be applied. So that's what we're going to do now. And then we're going to uh, see if, if it's actually working as expected. So let's try applying the previous PSP uh, to disable. Oh yeah. So this is one thing that I did. We're going to, we're going to disable PSP on the default namespace. And the way we do that is we're going to apply a privileged PSP that basically says allow everything. And that is a way that we can uh, 
disable PSP on the namespace by namespace level because this is the PSP that would get applied because it's not mutating um, and it would be the first one. Right, we're gonna <coughs> we're gonna do the same the same flow. You create a PSP. You gotta create a cluster role, and then we're gonna assign a cluster role to all the uh, service accounts in a default namespace. That's what we do with this group. It's telling that's for all the all the service accounts in the default namespace. Now we're gonna try deploying the same. Uh, privileged nginx which before it was psp was preventing that from happening but i expect that the baseline pod security standard that we just applied to setting that label on the namespace should also prevent privileged pods that's what we're going to do next we're going to see if this same thing that psp was blocking is it still being blocked but this time by psa and uh, we see failed create that's a good sign so far Let's take a look at the detailed error message of that field create from nine seconds ago. Um, and then we see that there is a, yeah, we see there is a error creating pod nginx prayers is forbidden because it violates pod security baseline latest. And then it tells you why it is violating that. And then it says, uh, it must not include net admin, which is not allowed, and previous. Must not set security context for is true. So as you can see, there's also some benefits in PSA from using the error messages got a lot more clear. It tells you specifically which what you must not do, um, which makes it easier to to solve these kind of issues when you when you encounter them. All right, that was the fast and easy migration path. Now Tim is going to talk more about. Um, some of the more advanced topics of PSP and things you might want to care about instead of doing a fast and easy migration.